All right, welcome back. This is Sports Zone, uh, your most authoritative Monday night sports show throughout the entire country and throughout the whole of West Africa. If you find a better Monday night show in West Africa, let me know. Send me the link. I would like to see and the people that make it the very best are right here with me. Switch off here, Philip at Shreem and Daniel Cranting. Hello, guys. Hey, hello. Oh, good. Today, you guys got the memo. <laughs> yeah, we got the memo. Yeah, great jackets <laughs> and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, how are you? You had a good weekend. You did not have a good weekend. Well, I had a good weekend. You were crying what? after Arsenal embarrassed you, but we'll get to that. Okay, because right now... I'm Today we'll address some things. Right mm. now, I'm the one on top of the wall. Chelsea, 6-0 victory. Okay, 6-0 victory over Everton Football Club. Chelsea have 47 points. Three points behind Manchester United. Having played one game less, if Chelsea win that one game, they go above Man U. Champions League football next season. Chelsea, here we come. Kopama, he has the same number of goals now as Ellen Haaland. Scored four goals tonight. He has 20 goals. And he doesn't even have Kedim Rubwana behind him, shredding passes to him. Can you can ice cold palm? Blue is the color. Join me. Football is the game. We are all together. And winning is our aim. Cheers. How do you have winning as your aim? Playing in, in, in the table. Chelsea wait, wait, you just beat an Everton Chelsea team. Chelsea has the Premier League player of the season in Copama. I will not hear otherwise. I saw Karim do some poll on Joy Sports that between Saka, Phil Foden, and, uh, and Copama, who would you start? Who would you bench and who would you sell? And I said, only one of them has 20 goals this season. He starts. I don't care what happens to the rest of them. Thank you very much. The show is proudly brought to you by Hunters. And Hunters, like I always say, when you meet as a family, or at every occasion, make sure your drink of choice is Hunters. And if you want to take it a notch higher, make sure you add Johnny Walker to the mix, as you should. Very important. And you need water. Okay, so one day, uh, you could be, you, while you are eating and drinking all these things, if your stomach cries you and there's no water in the house, problem. That's why you need to store water using Syntex tank. And you can open the top and close it. I've got my mini Syntex tank here. It's durable, it's reliable, and it's tough, and it's strong. And have over 300 agents nationwide. So just check them out. Syntex stand and order your tank from them and ask for the Fento discount. They give it to you straight away. We'll get to the Premier League title race and everything happening from the world of sport. Uh, we've got a lot to cover tonight. So I'm going to begin with the local league like you always like to do. And here at Joy Sports, we promote the local league. No matter what anybody says, it will skip the Ghana Premier League. We don't like it. Go straight to foreign. We will not go straight to foreign. Okay, this is our own. This is our own. <laughs> Let's cherish our own. Gala, really, really, it's back again. This is our own. <laughs> but that guy is, <laughs> that's why he falls over. No, he's funny, he's funny. He's funny. <laughs> this is our own. Where are the Ghana studios? Ghana Premier League is back again. Where are the studios? You see the woman who sells the blue fruit at their class? Yeah, yeah. The, oh, that woman. Chat. She's a legend. <laughs> anyway, so speaking of which, uh, we'll go to Kumasa and to go to court because there's trouble, there's fire on the mountain. The fire has been burning for a while, mm -hmm. <laughs> hasn't it? Uh, Dreams FC stuck the dagger where it hurt most, beating them comfortably. Take a look. Uh, 2 0, very comfortable defeat for them. Um, no win in the last seven. They've lost, actually, they've lost six of those. Okay? They lost 1 0 to Karela, 3 2 to Lions, 2 1 to Ajana. 1-0 to Nations. Then they drew the only game against Beijing United, which was a 0-0 draw. Then 2-1 defeat to Inshwacherman. And now a 2-0 defeat to uh, Dreams FC. And you just wonder. And I was just looking at this statistic. And just before I bring you guys in, um, between Prosper Ogum, and we have spoken about Ogum here, especially when he first got the job, about whether or not the second coming was ideal. Now, here's a stat that will blow all of you your mind. That Seydou Zebo, the man that Prosper Nate Ogum replaced, 
the three, the seven matches leading to his sack. Okay? And Danny K gave me this idea this morning. Okay? Said Zebo actually won three of them, drew one, and lost three. He got fired for that. He scored seven goals and conceded five. He had a goal difference of plus two. He got sacked for that. He won three matches in the last seven. He lost three and he drew one. He got sacked. Prosper Ogum's last seven games so far, till this point, he's won none. He's drawn one. He's lost six of them. He scored four goals and conceded 11 with a negative goal difference of minus seven. He's still in charge. What's going on there? I don't see consistency in standards and demanding the same accountability from people from in the same position. The structure, isn't it? Um, the structure under which Zebu worked was different from what Ogum is working under. Under Zebu, rules were clearly defined. We had a management team led by Nanaya and Ponsa, so they could take those decisions. And at the current interim management committee, of which, by the way, the coach, who is supposed to be reporting to them as part of, it's a different structure altogether. And remember when that, when that committee was formed, it was on, in, in, on the other set, in, on sports on that, I said that there needs to be a certain time frame. I get it, that is emergency. So what you want to do is put things in place and then you exit, then you get a proper structure in place to take over. But there were no timelines to what that emergency management committee was going to do. And I always thought that was going to be a problem. And it, it didn't, it, for now, it doesn't even look like it's an emergency. It looks like it's the mainstay. I don't even now, think that, there were clear targets. Yeah, and, and there is that as well. And, because, and, for example, and just to feed into what you said, Okum has no contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which defines, for example, what his targets are. Like KPIs or are the duration. Yes, yeah. yeah, no, no key performance uh, index. No expectations of him. This season. So it was, for me, as it, it, we have to, we, people keep beating about the bulls um, running around the circles, but the fundamental problem with Kotoko that we've seen post the Nayan Ponsa has got to be, and that was structured, they are working this season, and it's been disastrous. Ogum is a good kid, he's a good coach. We saw him two seasons ago um, in, in Wafa, three seasons ago in Wafa, finishing third, only behind had to Fuku won the league and Kotoko who came in second. The season that followed, he was in Kotoko, he won the league for yep. them. You know, so that, he can't be overnight turned into a terrible manager. But there are things at the club that, that is not working. And for him, who has to focus on being a coach, he perhaps is now occupied with too many other things that he shouldn't be venturing into. DK, uh, what has to happen now? Because how do, I, do they arrest this situation? Clearly, the league title is out. They're also out of the FA Cup. So quite simply, what's the motivation? for the rest of the season, because there's still eight games to the end. Um, to be honest, I perfectly agree with uh, Karim Zito, um, who says they should forget about this season. It's, it's done. I think Karim Zito himself doesn't even understand the reality. They forgot about the league a long time ago. Look, <laughs> point is, I don't think Kotoko is going to be relegated. And in the Ghana Premier League, whether the top four really doesn't mean anything. You're not going to win the league. You're obviously not going to win the FA Cup because you're out. This season is done and dusted. Um, Citra said it's about the structure, and for me, it's, it, it doesn't speak of a club that, that really cares about what is going on. For me, the, 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 whoever is in charge of putting the structure together, whoever is in charge of dissolving it and getting back to a properly run football club, doesn't seem to be applying a bit of urgency. Because for me, just two seasons ago, we saw what a properly run football club can do in Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Under the uh, management of Nana Aponsa, when Ogum was head coach, things were done well, yeah. and we saw results on the football pitch. That's what every organization wants. Obviously, there will be things behind the scenes, there will be petty squabbles here, and it happens everywhere. But the main focus of a football club is to have success on the pitch, and that's what we saw during that time. Then things happened that had to be uh, dissolved. But I thought that this um, IMC would come in a couple of months, quickly structure things and leave. The fact that they are still here with Ogum um, seriously underperforming because, look, seven defeats, it's, it's, it's terrible. This is a terrible it's, run, it's we it's have terrible. to admit. This, is, this you know, is what will get a team that is even bottom of the league fine. Like, yeah. 
even a team that expects to be in a relegation fight will be firing their manager if they are doing this. But have, I, have, I, exactly. the players, have the players I think also Kot checked out? Kotoka have the worst form of any team in the Premier League. And, and no team has lost six of their last That's seven. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not possible. But again, I'm wondering if the players have checked out. If you play for a club like Kotoko, mm. at the start of the season, you are straight away thinking about winning or competing. Yeah. So the fact that with 10 games to go, they are not in contention, has it, has it, the player, have they checked out? They are not in FA Cup. They are not, obviously, they are not in Africa. They were not there. And they don't win the league. So psychologically, when you play for a club like Kotoko, have they checked out? Look, for me, frankly, at least, when, I, when you try and put yourself in the player's shoes, okay? After the first two, three defeats, you look at it mathematically. If something changes, we still have the, there's still a possibility of going on to compete yeah. for the league title. But if my bosses don't seem to be doing anything about mm. it, the coach is repeating the same mistakes, we are still losing games. Obviously, he doesn't look like he, he's serious about winning football games, so why should I? And as you've mentioned, the ambition is up there at the start of the season. They get to a point, he goes home, he takes a shower, he's asking himself, I'm not going to win the league, so why should I go and be putting in tackles? Look at the goals that that lad was, was conceding yesterday. It's Such poor terrible. keeping. It's, it's, it's almost like it's, it's a comedy show. It's a, this is Kotoko. <laughs> the standards are falling yeah. so bad. But on the flip side, credit to Dreams because they needed to win to boost confidence, morale, and good, good momentum for them yep. going into the game against Zamalek. So they, they would really much have taken this game as one big preparation for them. Get a win. Let them, let them come feel good. Pick some momentum and go into Africa. Congratulations to them. Speaking yeah. of James, they're just one point above the relegation zone. Uh, but it's worth noting that they've played two games less than the rest of them. Kotoko are three points above the relegation zone. Uh, so that's not looking good. Um, how else have we had problems of their own? After a really great start for Abubakar uh, Watara, the head coach, uh, he lost three games on their bounce. Uh, but they showed great determination to come from a goal down to beat Karela United 3 1 at their crash post stadium on Saturday. To take a throw for Karela, sends one in, is flicked on by Anafo. A chance for Karela, and they open the scoring yet at their crash post stadium. Karela has silenced the phobias and gets to human Duffy. He scored against Gold Stars last week. It's as a work nil. Karela won. That's a throw from. Umar Farouk, not defended well by the phobias, he took it on the folly. All right, so uh, that's that. Um, I mean, impressive from Hazel Folk. Uh, I will show you what, how the rest of the results look like because Samatex continued to ride top of the Premier League table um, very comfortably after a very impressive weekend yet again. Uh, this is what it looks like. Samatex, they beat Brickham Chelsea by three goals to two. So they remain to medium and one nil against Lagos Cities. But Chim United, they beat RTU by three goals to two. That was a really good game, that match. Uh, Adriano Salas also winning one nil to keep the pressure at the top. Nations FC, they dropped two very crucial points at home to Bofoqua Tano in that title race. And Shatraman, they continue to struggle at this stage of the season, being held at home by great Olympics. Uh, as well there. So the table now looks like this. The Samatex on top with 49 points. Uh, Nations FC have 44. So they dropped two points over the week council. So, um, at the moment, five-point lead for Samatex at the top. A journal starts 42 points. Uh, they are some 37 points uh, behind the leader, Samatex. So Samarabai would be boiling right now. As things stand, they would be fancying their chances with only about eight games to the end of the season. The bottom looks like that. Karela, Heart of Lions, and RTU. So two Tamale-based teams currently in the relegation zone, and that's not looking good. And those are the only two teams from uh, the northern region or any part of the northern regions, Upper West, Upper East, uh, northern region, in the Premier League. So if those two were to get relegated, then the northern part of Ghana would have no Premier League team uh, to deal with. And that would be such a huge disappointment. So Karela and RTU uh, will have to do everything possible to get out of there. RTU is not looking good. Karela themselves, uh, they had a good spell uh, after, uh, after the break from the Afghan, but things have kind of taken a bit of a... Uh, uh, things have kind of plateaued at the moment, so it's not looking good necessarily uh, for them as far as that's uh, concerned. 
Uh, all right, cool. So anyway, quick thoughts on the table? Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, the bottom is tight as well as the top. Yeah. But it's, it's, I have a feeling it's going to be one of the newbies who are going to be, if you like, clinching it at the end of the uh, season. That's the top. Is, that'll be, uh, that'll have, be exciting. I've, I've struggled. I'm looking at the top. Yeah. I'm looking at perhaps Nations, maybe, in Swatterman, Sabatex. Sabatex. Yeah. I think Sabatex are, Sabatex are think looking good. They, Nations have got a great coach. they do an Arsenal, yeah. they are uh, going straight to the top. I think someone takes Yeah, that would be an incredible story. Forgive me, Arsenal fans. I just couldn't help it. <laughs> and I'm not talking about this season. I'm talking about... Historically. Last season. Yeah. You know, because it looks like they were comfortable until they weren't comfortable. All right. We're gradually uh, winding down to uh, talk about that Titanic title race in the Premier League. Before we do that, though, Ghanaian players were up to the business in Europe. And our man, Kari, huh? is here with all the lowdown and the performance of Ghanaian players abroad. My friend, how are you doing? You are so obsessed with Arsenal. Uh, well, how do you know that? You keep mentioning their name every now and then. This is the first time I have mentioned Arsenal's name on this show. Fact. Your, how? In your intro, what did you say? <laughs> no, you tell me what I said. I can't whether remember. I mentioned Arsenal. You I mentioned can't remember Arsenal. you mentioned Arsenal. You so mentioned this Arsenal. No, I only said after Liverpool and Arsenal ah, dropped. So, so you so mentioned Arsenal. Arsenal. That's Arsenal. Yes, but you see, that was critically needed. <laughs> I couldn't have done the intro without. Then you've come to mention Arsenal, Arsenal again. You said you mention. You didn't case, say. No, hold on. In this case, mentioning Arsenal <laughs> was avoidable. It was unnecessary. You said. In the first you... instance, it was an absolute necessity to have a great hang intro. Hang on, hang on. Into... So in this case, it was unnecessary that you mentioned yeah. Arsenal. <laughs> okay, so you're only saying that. Why would you mention Arsenal in an unnecessary manner if not for obsession? It's not Kyle. obsession. It's, it's not it? obsession. What is it? Kyle, Kyle, we it, it, it's just a, it's, it's just a great example. That's all. Uh, Karim, yes, what's same. going on? Your graphic is ready. Um, Let's go. Okay. And Alas 8 is spacious. Only those who endure patiently will get their reward without limits. That's Only those who endure patiently will get, will get their, their reward without limits. Without limits. Yes. Okay. Whose quote is that? He's <laughs> quoting the Quran. Oh. That is Surah Al-Azumar, Quran 39, verse 10. Yeah, that's a great quote. Did you just read that before coming or you've always known it? <laughs> <laughs> or you've always known it? Whatever. <laughs> I've quoted it. <laughs> because I know this man. And I know he knows a limited number of <laughs> to rest in the crowd. <laughs> and surely that's the one oh, he no. just quoted. It's not one of them. So, one of them. So, so, so in you saying this, the quote applies to that too. So okay. what you know, doesn't reduce or take away from what I can know. Okay. The F is so special. So, so how this... does your quote apply? Who has endured patiently and is now getting the reward? Let me talk to you about um, Ibrahim Sadiq. Okay. His move, he was flying in Sweden before that move to AZ Akma. Oh. Yes. And a lot of things really happened. He couldn't really settle in. Injuries have no help. In the last 10 games, he's not started any of them and has not played more than 30 minutes in any of those 10 games. And on, is it Saturday on Sunday or Sunday? His side, that is easy, Akmar, they were trailing 2 0 against Walwijk, or is it Walwijk? Uh, Valvik. Valvik. They were trailing 2 0, and they brought him on. Very impactful substitution there for him. When he came on, he assisted the goal that, makes, uh, that made it 2 1 and then scored a very beautiful goal. It was really nice to see from outside the box to make it 2 2. And that was a man of the match performance for him. Not getting enough playing time, really struggling to get into the team, not getting a good start as he would have loved himself. He was thinking like by this time he would have put himself in the conversation for a Black Stars scholar, but it hasn't gone um, to the start he would have liked. But now he's getting back really well. And now he has two, um, one goal and two assists for AZ Akma. And this is also, by the way, it's worth mentioning that he's a former teammate of Mohamed Kudus, Kudus. at Right to Dream at Norshalan and the Ghana and the 17 team from 2017, right. uh, Ibrahim Sadiq. So it's good to see him uh, getting the plodis now. Another man that shook off a lot of pressure to deliver the goose's pencil. That is exactly. 
and now they are top of the, their conference in the MLS. He scored a goal and provided an assist as well. He assisted um, the goal that was sort of an assurance. He scored the winning goal. That is the second in their 3-1 win. Uh, that is um, Ellie Galaxy yeah. in their 3-1 win over Vancouver Whitecaps in the MLS. And that is now three goals and three assists in eight games for him. He was given the Man of the Match award in that game. Then Ibrahim Suleimani played for Cagliari and they drew 2 2 against Inter Milan. And he no, was. That's not Kamal Dean. That yes. is. Um, Ibrahim Suleimani. Thank you. Mm. Um, it was clean for them. They drew 2 2. They are taking their relegation fight up a base more. And then a new name here, Rahim Ibrahim, former Accra Lions player. He now plays for Trenchin, that is in Slovakia. They won um, 4 0, I think, against FC Vion. And he scored two goals in that game. Then another new name, former Accra Lions, that is he is playing the pivot for me here. A uh, former Accra Lions player, he plays for uh, Sandsville, that is in Sweden, and they won 3 1 against AIK. And in that game, he completed the most passes and also was involved with the most defensive actions. Then Maxwell Wology, now back to back appearances for him for Salzburg. He did his side, Frederick Stad, they played against Salzburg, and the game ended 2 2 as a defender. He won the most duels in that game. Then Moomin, he is getting back gradually for Rayo Valcano. They drew goalless against Getafe, and in that game, it was very instrumental for them as always in the last three games. They struggled to keep clean sheets, but in those three games that he has started now, they've kept clean sheets in all of them. I and have I a question about Moomin. Has he, I know he's been called up a few, has he made his debut yet? No. Mm -mm. No. Wow. But he's been called up a few times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's Nathan Opoku? Yes, Nathan. No, Nathan, um, Nicholas. Nicholas Opoku plays for Oh, Ami Nicholas? Yes. Amien. Amien. They drew goalless against Quan Kono. That is in the French League 2. In the game, he won 100% of the duels he contested and also was involved in the five clearances. Then Jonas Aje, back to back appearances for him too. I tried back. That is, he plays for Basel. And in that game, was decent for them at, at right back and was involved in the second most defensive actions for them. Then um, Lawrence Atizigi in pool for St. Gallen. They won 5 1 against the Dawn in the Swedish uh, Swiss, Swiss Super League. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karim, with the perfect lowdown of the performance of Ghanaian players abroad. Sweet uh, Karim. Uh, and I, I always like to see new names. Yeah. yeah. But Ibrahim Slimana, though. Karim, sorry. Karim. Why is his best fit? Is he a box to box? Is he a defensive or is he an attack? In recent games, I've seen him play a more advanced role. Yes. And I think he's. And when he's. I think he's versatile enough to be a defensive midfielder and can go box to box as well. When he's closer to the box, he has that ability to take shots, as we've seen when he played against his former side, Hellas Verona, coming back from that injury. So he's versatile and can face into... Yeah. He can face I, re into I really liked him when position. they played against Inter. Yeah, and, and the national team at the moment is desperately in need of a very combative... Yeah. Uh, box to box midfielder. Investor midfielders are great because yeah. it gives you a certain yeah. level of tactical yeah. flexibility. Yeah. Even with the same player, you can change the shape of the team. Yeah. You know. Speaking of which, uh, th there's no player that has trended more this week than accepting Emmanuel Das. <laughs> 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 because could we name the, dropped him? Yes. He said he's his yeah. favorite teammate ever. The best player he has played with. Yes. Where is he? Is I, he playing? It's, it's from God set. Like, that from is From God it. set. No way. Yes. And the whole season, I think he has played just one game. Maybe it's not, the development is not going too well for him. Maybe he can catch up so sure, a bit yeah. later. Okay, interesting. Uh, another midfielder. So Kudus, we'll be watching him. We are doing agenda. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see through it. <laughs> Bottom line. Uh, anyway, so that's really good. Thank you very much, Karim, for that um, very comprehensive lowdown of Ghanaian players abroad and their performances. Um, we will take a very short break. But when we come back, I've got your messages. And we're zooming straight into the Premier League title race. And what a weekend it was. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. This is Sports Zone on Joy Prime, brought to you by... Syntex Tank, Johnny Walker, as well as Hantes. All right, cool. Uh, I've got your messages, as I promised. Uh, I will be reading and sharing some of them with the rest of our 
viewers from across the globe. Wherever it is that you've tuned in from, we appreciate your time. Uh, very good evening to uh, now uh, the, the man that is on top of the, the whole Ghana. No football administrator, they feel past this man. Can any of you guess? The whole Ghana right now. Who has the team in the CAF conference? He's poor day. He's poor day. I mean, Shadu. Hey, oh, by the way, it's our duty as good journalists as we are, as responsible journalists as we are, when we see true projects, okay? Last week, we were here to complain about the fact that potentially Dreams FC could be made to play their home game awesome. away from the Babaya Sports Stadium because the stadium was not up to standard. Yes. We are here to report that after several rounds of begging, <laughs> CAF has allowed Dreams FC to use the Babaya Sports Stadium for their semi final game against Zabaya. I'm happy for Dreams, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm not happy for Ghana. Yes, because, because in, the last, in the last three years or so, we've always had to beg. We are gone. And so we've not... We've... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, say that again. Oh, oh we are Ghana. We are Ghana. We will beg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm happy for Dream because they, they don't have to, you have to play at home. Guardians can yeah. support them. But nice. going you know forward, what? we need to fix that. You, you, let's take a road trip to Kumasi and support Dreams. Yeah, Why not? What do you think? Yeah, yeah we can yeah. do that. We'll use your car. I know, boy. Yes. I guess on green jersey. Yeah. Is there... In fact, you should... Jaya, no. Aminu should give us... Yeah, I had person. one. I had one, but that one is old. Yeah, yeah. You remember? That white one. And white one. That's what you have to wear. Oh, no, no, no. It means that you are you a are, you are titty fan. Uh, uh, no. You know what uh, we say? Well, now they, they, they play... Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I used it to convert my brother. Quick. So my brother is not a Dreams fan. Uh, so Shadow, I don't have Jesse. <laughs> we don't have Jesse. He, uh, Sucho doesn't have Jesse. <laughs> I don't have Jesse. Do the need for. Do the need for. Want to come to Kumasi to come and support the team. Team manager, team manager. Yeah, but, but that would that. actually be nice. Yeah, that would be. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll so we'll, we'll, we'll plan it. We'll be there. It's, this is our... This story is our... Hello, Premier League is back again. That be the part of the song. No, we love Ghana football. This is, it's our own. We love Ghana football. Anyway, a couple of messages, then we zoom straight into the Premier League action. Uh, Pelo says, my good friend Pelo, he's a fire officer in the Yeah. Uh, he says, he said, uh, just know that Karim wants to worry you because he knows he can't say anything concerning Chelsea today. It's true. <laughs> He's trying to be diabolical. Don't mind him. Yeah. Bra Raf, he says, Kopama is on a different level. I agree with you 100%. Prosper Akute, these messages I'm reading from Twitter. So use the hashtag SportsZone. I'll see them. Uh, Prosper uh, Akute, he says, uh, Fen, I'm watching the show with my Lile, and she's enjoying the show for the first time. Oh, that's right. We have a new convert now. Lile Spode. Yeah. So, shout out to Prospects Lile, you Spode. And then he says, um, we just finished watching the Chelsea match, and she got surprised Chelsea won the match with six goals. She even said she didn't know there's a team that sharp as Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is. It's called Man United. But that's none of my business. The question wasn't asked to me, so I'm not answering it. Uh, but anyway, okay. Uh, I've got, <laughs> I've got so many, I've got so many messages. Um, this one is from our very good friend. Uh, I will just read where he's sending the message from, and you people will tell me who that is. This message is from Pep. Uh, sorry, this one is from uh, the message is from Ontario, Canada. His name is Bedroom Pep Guardiola. <laughs> you move from the guy was always sending us the messages from La Paz. Then, or uh, two weeks ago, he started sending us Ontario, 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 Ontario Canada. Same name, different location. Oh, Cochra! <laughs> da, 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 da. He says, uh, uh, the disrespect Chelsea get from the media and why Liverpool and club get praised by the media is insane after all these years. They've won only eight trophies, the so-called golden generation. Even Chelsea dashed them four trophies, and Chelsea has only uh, six trophies since club came. Uh, I don't know why... Uh, all that hype for club. Uh, I don't know what all that hype for club is about. Tell Danny if Arsenal wins the league, I'll dash him two hundred Canadian, Canadian dollars. dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, <laughs> but uh, they won't. Uh, oh, but if they don't, he will also send me two hundred Ghana cities. Don't worry, oh, he has two hundred cities. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Uh, as a diehard Chelsea fan, I've been the happiest person on earth since Arsenal lost to Villa. In fact, we already know Arsenal will bottle this league. You don't tell me your name. Uh, a very good evening to you guys in the studio. I really enjoyed this, week uh, this week's dramatic football. I'm very happy being a Chelsea fan tonight. A lot of them are texting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but what is wrong with Noni Madweke and Nicolas Jackson? We'll get to them. I think Pochettino has to do something before it's too late. Francis in Osu sent that message. Uh, Madweke and Jackson were fighting over a penalty. So that's what he's talking about. Good evening, guys. This is Reggie from Osu. I'm really disappointed in Liverpool. As for Arsenal, I don't know what to say, uh, he says. This one says, good evening, fans. Uh, Chelsea played well this evening. 6-0 to them. Champions League is possible. Echo Kumse from Nungwa uh, Adogono with that message. This one says, good evening, fan. This is one of the best weekends I've ever had. What more can I ask for? Kotoko lost. Has of course won. Chelsea won. United two. Leverkusen <coughs> broke Bynes. A long-term record. And he says, greetings to all Chelsea fans in China. This is from your friend Castro Steve from China. China. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this message says, I'm Zakaria uh, Company from Damango. His name is Zakaria Company. Zakaria Company. Ah. Yes. I always love your submissions. Uh, my Tumu guy is, at, is on the verge of winning, as he predicted. City will win the EPL. Ah, yes. Uh, wishing that Nikkei speedy recovery, because what Asna did there? Mm. City for treble. And he says, I like the way you are handling Danny Key. Uh, this guy, he won't keep quiet. You know, I'm actually rooting for Danny Key because what a story it would be if he's actually right at the end of the day. Mm. That would be some bold prediction. Yeah, yeah. Even in the face of the evidence that we have right now, if Arsenal actually win the league, that would go down as one of the boldest predictions I've ever seen in, in punditry history. Anyway, without talking too much, you keep the messages coming. We'll take another batch after this. But let's get straight down to the action. And this weekend, there's been quite a lot of drama. Start that. Liverpool couldn't get, take advantage to get back on top. Arsenal didn't take advantage to get back on top. And so Man City remained there. This is what the table looks like right now. Okay, the results first, obviously. Man City, I don't know where Benaya's T and Y are. Okay, Benaya hates Ma that Man City at top of the league, so he has to move the T and the Y from it. So now, there it is. Man City, 73 points. Arsenal, 71 points. Liverpool, 71 points. And look, Tottenham Hotspur also faulted in their title chase. They lost embarrassingly to Newcastle. So they're still three points behind Aston Villa, even though they have played one game less. That one game less is against Man City. So it's not like it's a straightforward match. This is what it looks like, okay? Now, only last week or two weeks ago, when there were eight games to the end of the season, I asked these two gentlemen here, based on the remaining eight matches, who they thought would win the Premier League. Philip Sitofe Achirim, this gentleman, this is what he said, according to him. Take a listen to what he said two weeks ago about how the Premier League title was going to go. Prioritize. That's, that's the difference this season. They've got, enough, around. They've got enough to work with. Fabio Vieira is coming from injury. Yeah. Martinelli is going to be fit. Now, but the point is, Liverpool as well are in Europe. And if Liverpool go further and they are into the Europa League semi final That's more difficult. That is something else. And there's also Man City. If they get past Real Madrid, so the dynamics wouldn't only be on the Premier League fixtures, mm -hmm. but it would be, our, and City have also got the FA, FA Cup to, yeah. to, to, to worry about. That's so, against Chelsea in the semi final like, So there is, there is plenty hanging around other factors aside what we'll see, and that is where show of character, the quality of the squad, the strength you've got in your squad, okay. will tell. Plenty hanging on this season. Fair enough. What about you? Okay. A man didn't... I don't, look I don't look bad on TV. <laughs> no, you don't look bad on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's quite nice. Uh, Very nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, if, if Sicho was being very 
you know, wishy-washy about where his real position is. Even though he has said on other platforms yeah. that he thought Liverpool, Liverpool were going to go, and, go ahead and win it. This man has no doubts whatsoever about his conviction on who is winning the league. And in fact, he didn't just speak about who he thought was going to win. He somehow also knew who he thought was not going to win the league. Look at Kruk. One, one in, in, in spreading in the... Yeah. yeah. They do concede a lot of chances. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, at Man City, out. I know Man City. It comes will, down yeah. to Liverpool, Arsenal. Yeah. And obviously your look, heart has been with Arsenal. No, I... Look. Even the games on paper that look difficult, you look at, as in the traditional ones, you look at Chelsea, you look at Spurs, you look at Man United. Chelsea at, at home, it's hard, it's, it's, sorry, the Emirates is, it's a done deal, Arsenal is winning that one. Away at Old Trafford on the last but one day looks very tricky. It I is. think that's, that's the is. one that, I'm not too concerned about the Tottenham Hotspur game, but it's the away at Old Trafford. Now, that also depends if Man United have something to play for by then. If that, you don't. No, if they have something to play for, Arsenal will win. If ah. they don't have anything to play mm. for, it will be very difficult. Why am I saying that? If Man United have something to play for, they will have to attack Arsenal. It means, and that's the only way that Arsenal can beat Man United. If United decide to open up, that's the only way anybody can beat. But okay, hmm. Daniel says he, for as far as he's concerned, Man City are not win the league. Uh, he said the team that he knows in that list that will not win the league is Man City. They're top of the Premier League table at the moment. What Ed? Games to go. That was there two weeks ago. Now, with six matches to go, I want to hear from the guys. And these are what the remaining six games look like. Oh. <laughs> Why have you been modest? Because I thought you also said City would win. So I thought you were going to play a clip of you saying you think City would oh, win. Oh, yeah. I, 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 my position has been clear. You're you being very modest. Yeah, yeah. I have Quite never kind of been. Thing. I've never said a word. <laughs> said a word. I have said Man City would win the title right from the beginning. I said it on Game Plan. Yeah. People attacked me and said, Why? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, where is your position right now? This my, is what it is. My position remains the same as two weeks ago. And my position was that I think Liverpool were going to win it if they won all their games and I thought they were capable. But the caveat here was that in the three-horse race, it's a city as well who is also very likely to win all their games. And it's, if Liverpool slips, it will be for City to win and not Arsenal to, to, to take advantage of. So my position on, on how the dynamics are playing now still remains the same. And now that Liverpool have dropped these points and City have gone on to pick these points and Arsenal also dropped it, for me, it's City. Because I thought... It I said it to my corner now. You no, think no, City I have not. Are... No, it, you didn't listen to what I said. No, I get it. I get you. Yes. But I'm saying that... But now, so I'm back, Two I'm weeks back ago, to, yes, exactly. I'm back to your fault so, now. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm yeah. saying two weeks ago, you weren't setting. You yeah. just knew... Liverpool would win all games. Exactly. Yeah. And then you and said, obviously, if they game. slipped... City will take advantage. They have slipped, yeah. and you think that City have taken full advantage. They will win all the and from now on, they'll destroy there everybody. Is no looking back. They will destroy everybody. Danny K. Destroy everything. The prophet saw that it was going to be tricky. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But know, in the you realm. Know what that is, you know what that is, uh, that's, what we, that's what happens in churches when a visiting pastor or prophet comes to the church. <laughs> That's how they sit. When the others are preaching, when the others are preaching, before the, before the, before the, before the, the, yes, the visiting pastor is always quiet. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what have you seen in the realm? Because at the moment, the prophecy is shaky. I'm losing your ministry. These are trying times. But what is spirituality to that tribulation? Correct? You see, the beauty about the Lord our God Yes. <laughs> is that no it's true God doesn't thrive in the obvious he doesn't when he told Abraham that he will have a son the guy passed 80 he passed 90 people were mocking him and then he eventually had a son that's not the obvious so God does the impossible when God said it was going to rain yeah and he told Noah it was going to, to build, yeah, yeah. he should build an ark. It was a, a, a dry season. That's right. It wasn't rainy season. No. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was no global warming. So no. there was no <laughs> surprises. No surprise rain. The climate surprise was clear. Rain. It was dry clear. season. Dry season. It was dry season. The people say it's not office. possible. They were mocking Noah. And then <laughs> it rained. And it rained for one day. It rained for 40 days. That's right. 40, 40 days and 40 nights. And 40 nights. I have what seen... What about Noah? I have seen... That's right. Martin Odegaard 
taking the trophy and lifting it <laughs> on the 20th anniversary of the Invincibles. And you see, for me, <laughs> this weekend, I was really, I, it was funny. Did you see this result in the realm? Spiritually, I saw it before the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, and there's poof. Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> guy. You see? <laughs> no, US you no. said US Aston no. Villa are so poor away from home. Yeah, so this is not Arsenal, a game that they are going to I win. Arsenal, Arsenal blows win. them apart. That was logical analysis. Yes. You before combine the logic game. with the spirit. Before the game. And came to the conclusion before they the would game, win. I tweeted something. What did you say? As soon as the Arsenal lineup dropped, I said I, I didn't like that Arsenal lineup. Oh, the there was, lineup. There was something that looked off about it. Tactically and spiritually, the two of them were not married. Somebody's working at Eta. There's something wrong somewhere. <laughs> but I also. <laughs> the, the overthinking spirits. And you can understand why he's overthinking. Yeah. He's, he's, he's getting nervous. So some of these things happen. But for me, I'm happy it's happened with six games to go rather yeah. than with two games to go. Okay. Fact is, there are still six games to go, guys. City have matches to play, Liverpool have matches to play, Arsenal have matches to play. This mistake, that this loss for Arsenal, and this is the differentiating factor. In seasons past, we saw a team that just couldn't live up to the occasion and ended up crumbling. This time around, it was a tactical error. It wasn't about the players not showing up. It was about Arteta making a mistake in his tactics and Unai Emery capitalizing. You've always that, known that Ateta has a mistake or two in him. That's for inexperienced managers. I didn't expect mm. him to make it at this point in the mm. season because, honestly, I believe that. And from what I've seen this season, I think he's learned a lot and he's grown a lot. But unfortunately, it looks like something ticked. What was the mistake? Bringing Harvest back into midfield. First two months of the season. In fact, when you guys were going out about me, about uh, uh, Harvest not doing well, like not Midfielder starting, and it's not going to work. Yeah. It, it, that experiment wasn't working, and he had to put Havertz in a, in a position where he would thrive. And we've seen it from 2024. Yeah. From January 1 till now, Havertz has been playing in that false nine position, which allows Odegaard to thrive in the zone that he wants to. Havertz is very intelligent with drifting wide, creating spaces for uh, his teammates, and also getting on the end of chances. Then he brings Harvard's back into midfield. Now, what that does is that now you have two number eights who off the ball are not as good yeah. as when you, are, when you have somebody like Jorginho and then Rice playing in that midfield. There's a bit more compactness, there's a bit more steel. And especially in terms of transitions, it gives you some surety knowing that even in transitions, you have guys who can recover. But when Harvard's plays in that role, now he's fighting with, with Odegaard in the same zone. His offensively, yes, his late runs into the box, and what you saw in the first half, his late runs into the box was working. Or, 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 yeah, they were working. But it's just about the opposition adapting. And when you consider the manager Arsenal were facing in Unai Emery, you just knew he would react. And what did he do in the second half? He withdrew Magin to be like an extra centre-back. So Magin was basically waiting for the run of Havertz. So Havertz moving out of his zone into the Villa um, um, defensive third, he was covered, and he was now basically leaving a huge gap in the, in the midfield for Arsenal. When you look at the midfield guys for, for Aston Villa, they are more likely to win their 50 50 goals, very combative. So that's where Arsenal were basically lacking a man in midfield, yeah. and it, that allowed Aston Villa to completely dominate that, that second half. And I thought after about five, ten minutes into the second half, Arteta should have quickly changed it. There was Jorginho, there was Partey. And this is what we spoke about at the start of the season, the fact that now he has options. Now there's no excuse. You can, you can look at your bench and quickly make a tactical switch and rectify the situation. Strangely enough, he didn't. And when he did, he made some really strange substitutions. It was a like-for-like -like change, and was smith Rowe coming yeah. from um, Martin Odegaard. smith Rowe, who is not on form, and then he also brought in Jorginho for... In place of Jesus. In yeah, in place of Jesus. Then he brought on uh, uh, Tommy Asu. At that point in time, it just, it was a bit too stale because yeah. if you send Havertz forward, then yeah. you need somebody who can create. And Odegaard is that guy who can create and unfortunately it didn't work. I feel sorry for Mikel Arteta a little bit. I, listen, I was, I was with you. When I saw the lineup, I thought, no, don't do this. But to be fair to Aston and to Arteta, in the first half, that, that did work. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking is, when you look at Aston Villa and Spurs, they are the two teams who, have, who play the highest lines in the Premier League. Yeah. Now, if your striker is going to start the, the run from the striker's position, he's most often they're not going to be off because they're incredibly good. 
So Gabriel Jesus was almost like the bait for the yeah. offside line. And then the runs yes. were coming from Kai Havertz. So, and Aston Villa's line was very high in that first half. And Aston, when they dictated the play, Zincheco would spin balls in behind the line yeah. for Havertz to run onto. We saw about three, four scenarios. Aston just didn't make the right decisions in the end. And it's almost like the City game where they drew goals, where people were happy with the draw. But I, thought, I said it here. I thought they had better scenarios to win the game. In that first half, Arsenal could have won by two goals to know in that first half. Mm -hmm. Jesus not making the right decisions, having to get it in some positions and not making the most of it. So I thought thinking maybe then was to get the late... Because one of the most difficult things to track in football are always late runners coming from deep. You all, they are always breaking those offline, uh, offside traps. And Arsenal did that. But United Emery credit to him. In that second half, that whole Aston Villa high line stopped. They stepped back. So Arsenal couldn't play, not, not once, not even twice, play in behind that Aston Villa back line. But what he also did was, because Zinchenko was invented so much and Musa Diaby wasn't having a great day, then Bailey came on and it was a different ball game altogether. But my thinking is, why would Arteta try to change something that is not broken? Because I get the thinking in what he tried to do, but I still think he could have beaten Aston Villa by doing what he's consistently done over that the last... That has worked. That has worked to yeah. perfection over the last uh, three months or so. So I think you look back on it, these are some of the mistakes people were, say, in an experienced manager, trying to overthink it, what have you. And in the end, losing this fixture at the Emirates has just handed City maybe the pass. Mm. So um, as far as Daniel is concerned, he thinks that, yes, this was a blip and a big one at that, but uh, there's still confidence that Arsenal could go ahead and win the but, league. Look, one thing that has to happen for Arsenal to win, obviously, is that City need to drop points. Yeah, City need to drop points. But... This this whole situation is funny, eh? Mm -hmm. Since Arsenal lost the game, it, it's a sort of commentary that is going around. So this is my thinking, okay? If everybody is thinking that Arsenal losing six games to go, losing the advantage, is on brand, and it's funny because Arsenal are bottling it and it's funny, mm -hmm. then what about Liverpool? Yeah, we'll talk about Liverpool. Liverpool who, you guys said they were consistent. You guys yeah. said they have more experience when it reaches this point in time. Mm -hmm. As soon as he came into contact with Ten Hag, <laughs> He drops points at Old Trafford. He goes to um, at home against Atalanta. Yeah, fails terrible. to score, loses uh, three 0 Then mm. against uh, Crystal Palace again. A Crystal Palace team under Glasnow who haven't found their their, their rhythm yes, yet. Can be yes. Yes. We all saw yeah. them last week against Man City. They were really poor, especially defensively. And then they just fail to score. It's not about the loss. Yeah. It's about how how on earth is Crystal Palace keeping a clean sheet? At Anfield, at Anfield, yeah. Playing like this. Like, it's not like Crystal Palace sat back and they were defending. Liverpool had chances. Yeah. But again, this has been on brand this season. Liverpool creating opportunities and missing. And for again, it comes down to the recruitment. Darwin Nunes is not a pure finisher. Yeah. Um, Diaz, Gaku. The only pure, there are two. In Jota, who is almost always injured. And Mohamed, Mohamed Salah, Salah who yeah. you, you know you, you can, can trust, yeah. But in seasons past, you look at the likes of, of, of Sa Sadio Mane with a volume of... If you create a certain volume of chances, you are guaranteed at least 15 yeah. goals. You know you get at least 10... And Mane was always ending seasons stronger, yeah, than, Salah stronger than Salah. very strong than Salah. So there was always this point where you didn't necessarily need Salah to be 100% for mm -hmm. you to get your point because Mane was a decent finisher. But I don't think they've replaced that front three. Yeah. In terms of, of style of play, they are given similar, but when it comes to the fine details of finishing, that's it's not the same. They, it's, it's not the and, same. And, and, the problem still and I agree with you because when you, when you look at Liverpool and, and the fact that, like, like we said, they've got a chance of winning the Premier League, but there's something about their characters. It's become almost like a habit to them where in about 14 games mm. in the Premier League, out of 32 games they've played, Liverpool have conceded first. Mm -hmm. And they've most often been built by the attackers. Unfortunately for them, that trend has continued, but the attackers are misfiring. Yeah. So in the game against Crystal Palace, it could have been 2-0 before Liverpool started creating, but it was 1-0 because Robertson cleared one ball off the line. Then the opportunities came and they couldn't take them. I've always said that throughout this season, Liverpool have got defensive problems. Yeah. It's, it's funny because when you look at it, they're not considering so many goals. They are considering, they are considering chances. chances. Yeah. And they are not, when, they, when they consider they consider a goal, they win by three goals to one, they win by two goals to one. But it's not sustainable. And I remember two years ago, if anybody remembers, Liverpool went on a run where they were always considering first and they would come back and win. And when they asked Jurgen Klopp, that is when he gave them the tagline, mentality monsters. 
<laughs> now, 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 that mentality is, is not happening because so many important players are out of form. Yeah. Mohamed Salah is not, is not scoring goals. Gakpo is sometimes out of form. Darren Nunes is not scoring. Jota just got back from injury. Curtis Jones is not the same player as he was at the start. So there, there are a lot of things that is not working for Jagging Club and for Liverpool now. They would hope that City drop points so they can capitalize. But will they be able to win the rest of their games that is left of the season? Only time will tell. All right. So, uh, Liverpool is not looking good for them. Uh, Arsenal, obviously, not looking good. But this is the test of character. It's a test of... Um, even if Arsenal wait to go on a winning run till the end of the season, win every single game and not win the Premier League title, I would still give them massive credit because in that case, then it would just be this small bit that would have cost them. But if they go on to drop a few more points and Man City end up winning the Premier League title by some margin that shouldn't be happening, then surely we have reason to question Arsenal's mentality. Uh, a team whose mentality cannot be questioned is Bayer Leverkusen. They won the Bundesliga title on beating this season uh, and their final game against Werder Bremen, uh, their final Bundesliga game, but the game that won them the title was a party. 5 nil transfer. And then the pitch invasion that happened after was ridiculous. Well, congratulations to Bayer Leverkusen. And this is how they did it. Only 29. They've, they've won the league with uh, five games to spare. 29 matches, 25 wins, four draws, zero defeats, unbeaten. 74 goals scored, 19 goals conceded only. They have the fourth longest unbeaten run in Bundesliga history uh, with 29 games on beating, and they have the longest unbeating start to a Bundesliga season, which is 29. It's ridiculous statistics uh, from Bayer Leverkusen. Xabi Alonso, when he took over the club in October 2022, they were second from bottom. <laughs> and look at what he's done with them. Unbelievable. No excuses. And they picked up a bunch of players that nobody knew. Jeremy Frimpong was a reject from Manchester City. Yeah. Um, your mother so, was free. Jacob was, was not signed. wanted at yeah. Arsenal, if you like. So a bunch of players that Patrick Sheik was struggling for real form. Even Timothy Fusuma, I mean, he's not played much, but he's there. These are all the players that have come together to create such a great, phenomenal football club. And they are on course to win every trophy available. Uh, they are in the final. Of the Pokal, yeah. Kaiser's last. Of the, yeah. of the Copa. Uh, and, uh, they are in the... Uh, the quarterfinals of the Europa League, and they've beaten West Ham in the first leg. They are Bundesliga champions. So it's unbelievable feat from Xavi Alonso. Yeah, and they've done that by playing some of the best football in Europe. Not, not many teams have played better than them. They've, they've gone about it with their style that is really entertaining. So yeah, credit to them. Um, Xavi Alonso is, has done an incredible job. As you mentioned, the players that he's used in the brand of football he's played. Not too many teams are going to get over, I mean, get the better of Bayern Munich in the way they did. Yeah. And to do it without losing any game to this point, that is another thing. So it's not like they would drop points, but Bayern won't capitalize on it. It's not like they would drop points and other teams, they are just winning. You, you can't beat them. It's, it's, it wasn't handed over to them. They All draws it. means they've dropped only eight points. Yes, they, mm -hmm. took, they took this, 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 this title. So yeah, uh, Meister Kuzen, congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, they'll be on top in every the top five leagues in Europe. Yeah. So in the Premier League, they'll be on top. Yeah. With less games played. Yeah. They, wow. Yeah, they've been yeah. that good. Yeah. That good. With 79 points, exactly. The yeah. Premier League That's top. That's The top team has 73, 73. And they've played, what, 32 30, games. Two games. Yeah. They played only 29 matches. Mm -hmm. That's that great. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's a great perspective. If they were in any other league in Europe, they would be top, including in the Premier League with the kind of form they've exhibited. Um, we'll talk Champions League football very shortly, but let me read a few more messages, as I promised. Uh, Ibrahim says, he's a national fan from Takwa. I've still not giving up. There'll be more twists this season. I just think Ateta took a gamble, and he failed. I just don't understand why he played Kai in the middle. Um, all right, thank you very much, Ibrahim. This one says, uh, since when have you become a Chelsea fan, Fentu? The last time I checked, you have been laughing at us. Anyway, congratulations to Chelsea for their win. We hope they continue winning the rest of their EPL matches. Francis KFC at uh, Kanjaga Upper East Region. What's your surprise? That's, <laughs> that's weird. Since when you become a Chelsea fan, you didn't uh, answer. Uh, 
<laughs> I think he's, he's, he just started watching the show. He just started watching the show. Um, uh, and then someone sent me a picture and said the guy's behind Kotoko's problem. It's a very interesting lineup of people that I don't want to it's quite uh, show it to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are funny. Uh, Jojo Yabua in Tema Community 4 says, uh, six nil and you are still around 9th, 10th and 11th position. What at all is the problem? Don't ever dream of surpassing United. Okay, no wahala. Don't worry. Talk is cheap. That's how I am from my talk is air. This message says, I'm just as watching your show live from Akimoda. In fact, Chelsea's Kopama has done it again. You guys are doing a great job. I love the energy. This one says, good evening. My name is... Diamond from a Jusso uh, Bronichrome. Uh, Bronichrome. Arsenal will still win the EPL this season and will also get the Champions League final where they will face Barcelona. We'll mm. talk about the Champions League very shortly. This one says Tahiru is happy because Chelsea beat a suffering Everton team. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I think Atleta is giving out the EPL to City after losing to Villa yesterday. Uh, Kotoko is rebuilding just like Chelsea. I can't wait for tomorrow's Champions League second leg. Say Willie. Sports presenter at Flow 89.9 FM, local radio station inside K2 South Municipality. Shop. Done. City versus Madrid. Who is winning, he says. Mm. Yeah, we'll get to it shortly. But thank you uh, for that. Uh, Sir Willie, uh, also in this business with us. Uh, I thought you have traveled outside, Mr. Fento, because I used to watch your, you on your former station. It's only today that I realized you're on Joy Prime. I'm so happy to catch you. A Jap P at Old Tafo in Kumasi. And this is why, even on holidays, we have to do a show. Mm -hmm. Because every show, there's always a new audience, a new viewer. Thank you for that. I've been here. I've been here. I've been here. Every Monday, 9 p.m. to 10.30, we are here. The three of us. Every Monday, we are here. Uh, good evening, guys. It's good to be back on Sports Zone today. It's always... Loving to catch up with you guys. Fen, how do you guys see our match tomorrow, Madrid versus Man City? Anyway, Madrid, we are winning, he says. Hi to Madrid fans, especially my brother Farouk from Bandi. Joseph Bambori from Bandi uh, sent in that message. Bandi in the Sala East District of the Upper West Region, a.k.a. Carrizo mm -hmm. Town. <laughs> <laughs> um, Moses Arthur at Abiasi Pru West in the Bunu East region. He says, I'm more than ha a happy man. Chelsea has made my night. Kopama has no match. Best wish to Accra House of Folk. Greetings to all the Blue supporters and their sweet family. Ferdinand, Isabella, Theodosia, Ajewa, Elizabeth. This is from Moses Arthur with that message. Let me take a couple more. Uh, this one says, uh, this is Dominic. Uh, I want to inject some medicine to the Kotoko illness. I heard an audio from the Asante Hini. He says he's appointed the coach and no one should intervene on his decisions on choosing a player, etc. If he succeeds in winning, as in improving the team, he can be the head as long as he wants. But if he feels he himself, the Asante Hini, will suck him. So the question here is, why is the coach still coaching upon all these terrible losses? Chicken sent in that message. His name is Dominic. I used to teach him in secondary school. I wow. nicknamed him Chicken. Mm -hmm. Never nickname your students Chicken. Mm -hmm. I did it. Wasn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. Michael Jetta from The Gambia says, What a win for Chelsea. At last, we have a comfortable win. And not just that, with a clean sheet also. Go Palma, just wow. Player of the season. Michael Jetta, thank you very much. She's always watching the show. She was the one who sent us a message and said she's female, wasn't she? Uh, it's Michael. Michael, right? Michael. Michelle. Michelle? It says Michael here. It says Michael. Okay. Michael. But it has a female as the DP. Okay. She's, then he's not a female. Okay. Jetta, are you male or female? Let us know. Michael can be, can't be a female. Ma maybe an A is missing. Is your gender? Yes. Maybe an A is missing at the end. Michaela. Or the A and the E are... If the name is Michael... Then it is male. A male. Yeah, well, and if it is Michaela, then we can have another discussion. We can. Which is going to be a female. Aisha Said from Accra says, Fred, Assalamu alaikum. Yes, Aisha Said. Isn't that Karim's girl? Fred. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Ah, that's Karim's girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Daddy came here some food. Did he eye saw us? Ah, I saw you see, you see, he has a sharp, sharp memory. There's only one eye saw the show. And you know how I confirm? I just look at the previous message to this yeah, number. Quick. And it's the one that says, I'm crashing on Curry. Hey. Curry must have taken the number. And, and, and she's come to confront me. She says, Fent, why are you always on my crash? Hey. <laughs> Sweet Curry. He says, Abdul, I just like your presentation. See the way you call it? Abdul. Abdul. I, I, you see? That's very personal. I told you. I think has Curry must your... taking the number. That's, like, that's, <laughs> so, that's yeah. very personal. Abdul. Curry is rebranding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Uh, Israel from Volta Region says he loves our show. Uh, okay, let's see the Champions League fixtures. Um, everybody will have uh, one minute previews, okay? Or let me make it 90 second previews. The return legs of the UEFA Champions League. Uh, Suchu, 60 yeah. second previews. Tell me who will win why in 60 seconds. I think Barcelona will go through. They are home PSG. I'm still not sure about them. They are almost like an Mbappe team. If it doesn't flourish, no, nothing works. I think Barcelona have too much for them. Atletico Madrid are way at Dortmund. Atletico Madrid, I think Atletico Madrid will go through. They, just, they can go sit in defend, hit on the break. Griezmann is in great form. Ah, that's no. Listen, I think Bayern Munich will go through. I think Bayern Munich have just got the character. They've got the pedigree. I, I, I feel sorry for Arsenal, but Arsenal blew it at home. I think Bayern won't blow it at home. And then there is that one between Man City and then Real Madrid. It's advantage Man City, but it's Real Madrid, it's Champions League, anything could happen. But if I'm betting money, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm actually casting something on this game, it's got to be on Man City. Interesting. Danny K? I think Barca will go through. If it was any other manager managing PSG, I think we'll have a battle. Um, but unfortunately, it's Luis Enrique. Um, look, What's wrong with Enrique? It's a former Champions League winner. Yes, and he's too stubborn in his style. We know he's not going to change anything. So. That's, a, that's a, a sort of a disadvantage. For Dortmund, I, th I think that Dortmund, Dortmund and Atletico game will go into extra time. Mm. I think Dortmund will win the second leg into pushing to extra time. I don't know what will happen after that. Um, the Arsenal buying game. Look, aside that 5 1, Arsenal have a pretty good record at, at the um, Allianz Arena. Uh, they drew their ones, they won their ones. Unfortunately, away goal hurt them. Um, look, this game could go either way. Again, I'm still looking at extra time. I don't think Arsenal... Uh, if Bayern will win, I don't think they'll win in 90 minutes. If mm. Arsenal will win, I don't think they'll win in 90 minutes. I think this game will also go into extra time. Manchester City versus Real Madrid. Um, City will finish the game by the 60th minute. By 60th minute? Yeah, done in Interesting. That. Thank you, Danny Kay. Bachelor says he's a City fan. He just arrived from the USA and he says he's happy to watch us. And he says that he thinks Man City will go through. All right, so that's that. Uh, there's commentary on 99.7 Joe FM. It's 103.9 Tuesday on Wednesday. But thank you very much, guys. Sicho, uh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you to all of our viewers from home. Uh, we are very grateful. We're back again next Monday. Until then, bye-bye.